welcome back to another New York City vlog. This is the final New York vlog of what we got up to in our final few days. So this was a very much lower Manhattan kind of day. It was quite gloomy, quite miserable, but we headed down to the World Trade Center and had a walk around because this is where we spent so much of our time. Me and my boyfriend used to work around here. This is my old office building, Seven World Trade Center, and it is a bit surreal that I used to work in this area, but we spent so much time here, so it's so nice to come back. And then we headed down towards Wall Street and I always just tend to like look upwards every time I'm in this area because the architecture is just stunning and it was obviously the first area of New York that was built back in the day. So it's very old, very old style buildings and we're on Wall Street and this is of course the little Supergirl standing outside facing the New York Stock Exchange to just show that any little girl that has dreams of working in the city can do it. But do we all want to work in the New York Stock Exchange? No, but some people might. But yeah, the buildings around here are just absolutely stunning and very, very old. Then we headed to the Dead Rabbit, which is a very famous Irish bar, one that I had not yet been to. And it was a very cozy pub, very famous, very popular, very, very cozy. And it had sawdust on the floor just to give that old Irish feel. <laughs> Then we headed uptown towards down the hat, which was a local of ours. We used to spend a lot of Sundays in here for wing Sundays. And it's, yeah, just one of our favorite bars we love to come to. <laughs> then we bar hopped again to McSorley's Old Ale House. This is a very famous Irish bar. I think it's one of the oldest Irish bars in New York in 1854. And it was very cozy. Again, sawdust on the floor, just to kind of get that old Irish feel. It was very Christmassy as well, but really, really cozy. Only serves two types of drinks. You have pale ale and dark ale. So we went for the pale ale and that's all they offer. So if you're not a fan of ale, this might not suit, but it is extremely cozy and has a lot of history. So definitely worth a visit. Then we headed back uptown even further because we were going to Keane's Chop House. This is a very famous steakhouse in the city with a lot of history. You can see all these pipes. They have the biggest pipe collection, I think, maybe in the world, but a lot of famous names. Again, a lot of American history in this place, but the food. Guys, look at this. Himself had the mutton and I had the steak. I don't know what they're feeding the cows over here and the animals over here, but the food was huge and some more pipes on the ceiling. But this is just an indication of what the bill came to. So for two people, not many items at all, but yeah, $200. So it's expensive. So our second last day in the city wasn't a good one because himself was up all night with food poisoning and all day. Not sure what we had yesterday that caused it because I was absolutely fine, but it meant I had a little solo day to myself to wander New York. It was our second last day as well before we left the next day. So I wanted to go to New York or nowhere because I had my eye on a few little things and I had wanted to visit this store for so long. And it is a very small store with not much on display, but I did purchase one of these posters for our flat in London, which you can probably see in our January vlog, which I will link here as well. And then I headed to an old local of mine, which is Stumptown Coffee Roasters near the West Village and wrote my goals for the year and did some journaling, which is very, very nice before I started my book shopping for the day. So I headed to McNally Jackson Books in Soho. I didn't realize that nothing opens until like 12 o'clock in New York. So this is why I had to go get coffee and a pastry because I had to wait until anything actually opened. <laughs> lives and co which in the west village and was so here for this girl getting her shot and some influencer content but gorgeous little store people in here really really knew their stuff and i purchased a few books as well then i headed to left bank books which is a rare bookstore in new york so i didn't buy anything but it was quite nice to look around then of course everyone's favorite the strand bookstore 18 miles of books so i always come here and i always end up buying things and i have about five tote bags in my flat from the strand because i just can't stop buying them and it is one of my favorite stores in new york but it is always very very busy so that's just one thing to be mindful of but there are so many books and so many different little areas of the store with hidden gems everywhere and little quieter areas so you can get a really really good look but yeah it's huge 
And then I headed to my other favorite, Alabaster Bookshop, which is secondhand, and I bought more books in here. And I will link my book channel because I did buy a lot of books and I have a New York book haul. Then I headed on to Mercer Street Books, which is quite near Washington Square Park, and another secondhand favorite of mine. And then I came to this bookstore for the first time. It's Housing Works Bookstore, and it's from apparently the All Too Well music video by Taylor Swift, which I'm not a big Taylor Swift fan, so I don't really know, but it is a gorgeous bookstore. It has a cafe and it has a little sitting area if you wanted to come do some work. And then it was time to go home and look after the patient for the rest of the evening. And it was our day to leave, it was our final day. It was quite foggy, so we didn't get the best view in the morning, but we headed downtown again because I wanted to spend some time in the Lower East Side and I hadn't done that yet. And it's one of my favorite areas, especially during the morning and day times in New York. So we headed down towards City Hall near Brooklyn Bridge area and came across You and Me Books, which is an Asian bookstore and had a massive selection of Asian literature would definitely, definitely recommend. Then for some pre-breakfast, we headed to Fried Dumpling, which is an absolute favorite of ours. We used to come here all the time after work if we were exploring the city because the dumplings are so, so cheap. Here's the menu just for example, 13 dumplings for $5. And this used to be our dinner all the time because it's so filling. 13 dumplings for five dollars. Then we headed to Orchard Street, my favorite street in the Lower East Side, and we headed to Sweet Pickle Books. First time I haven't been here before, and I picked up a book from this free bookshelf outside, and I also went in and purchased some merchandise. I got a tote bag, and I got a sticker, and Harry Styles has actually been here before, and also bought some merchandise, so that's one to know, but yes, they also do sell pickles. Then we headed to Dudley's on Orchard Street, I had passed this before on our last trip to New York and always wanted to go here. It's owned by the same company as Ruby's and you can see my breakfast compared to himself. He had a very plain piece of toast. It didn't go down very well. And then this is my favorite little corner of Orchard Street. I used to get my coffee from here last time we were here. Lots of great graffiti on Orchard Street. And this is the Tenement Museum. I've been here three times for three different tours and honestly it is my favorite museum in New York and the gift shop is unbelievable. I could buy everything. It's very, very New York themed. Then I discovered another new bookstore, which is PT and Knitwear. So it kind of gives back to the community. It's a very community centered store where that it holds whatever you need. Like it has a free podcast studio, it has a cafe, it has a working space. It is very much community centered, has lots of events, great book selection, and just a really, really nice vibe. And of course the free podcast studio, like unbelievable. And then we passed the famous Cat's Deli and headed up towards the East Village. And this is the East Village Bookstore, so you can donate books. They actually will pay you for books as well if they fancy it, and has a great selection. And then it was time for our final drink before heading to the airport. So we came to the Standard in the East Village, which is somewhere I used to come and work all the time. Just a very, very nice, cozy vibe in there. And I had an Aperol Spritz before we headed off back home. Oh, bye New York, and thank you so much for watching.